They thought they were. Okay, um, <laughs> we're going to call the uh, ooh, today. I, I didn't see it. the uh, it was in my boat. March twenty second, yes, March twenty second, twenty twenty three meeting of the Lake Commission to order. Um, thank you all for coming, and we'll get right to it. Uh, the meeting right now is being recorded, and so it's going to be available on video. I believe we're live right now, so there's no delay for swearing. Um, and uh, the first uh, uh, item of business here is to uh, vote to appoint the uh, Lake Winn Sigmund Commission officers for the calendar year. So we have um, three uh, three. Uh, executive positions we'll say we have president or sorry chairman vice chairman and uh treasurer i move that we vote to elect officers for the coming year okay so is there any nominations for uh chair make not nominate peter collins great i'll second that oh okay i thought you were going to say no yeah, i was going to nominate <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i knew better but i yeah. i was going to nominate uh Vitals, but he's not here so. That's the best time to nominate him. Yeah. You can't object. Okay. Um, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, thank you. Um, nominate Mike Piker for vice chair. Second. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Thank you. And treasurer. Here. Nominate uh, Bill Nelson for treasurer. Do you <laughs> accept that? Yeah, I'll accept it, but I'm sort of surprised. All right. I'll second that. Is that. Everyone good? Yeah. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. There you go. Congratulations, Bill. That's a gift for not stepping back fast enough. <laughs> Someone will have to explain what the duties are. Okay. Um, <coughs> uh, review and approve of uh, bills and expenses. So what do we have, Bill? Bills and expenses. <laughs> <laughs> I am clueless. <laughs> Ugly clueless. Maybe we should ask the oh. previous treasurer. Alyssa, thank, thankfully. This is what you do. You ask Alyssa. That's, that's, yeah. So I have, we have to do the February <laughs> bills and the March bills. So in February, we're doing some porta potty bills for the previous summer at the <clears throat> PD Boathouse. Um, and those come to 276.40 three <laughs> times. And then this month we paid the community advocate for the notice of refill, and that was seventy nine twenty. Okay, that's, that's, that's February's um, or, or January. The porta potties were for, for from last year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions or comments on that? No. No. Okay. Um, is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. Second. S second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So voted. Thank you. Um, Did you accept the mi minutes, uh, Mr. Chair, from the November? Did I miss that part? 22, yeah, 22 meeting. I'm sorry. Has anyone had a chance to review the minutes from? Yes. Uh, any questions or comments? No. Oh. No. All right. Um, do I have a motion to accept the meeting? I, I have a motion to approve the minutes from the November 2022nd meeting. I'll se second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. And um, public participation. Did we get anyone this time? Um, I just had a note for Igor Sorokin from Lakeside yep. Drive. Which last time. Okay, yeah, Igor's not here, right? He's okay. not here, Yeah, okay. All right. Um, and uh, discuss and possibly uh, act on adaptive water ski event this summer for disabled veterans. So I'm going to uh, pass that one over because we don't have a firm date from that side yet. Um, and number, sorry, eight. my glasses are. Number eight. Number eight. Update uh, like management plan. Um, <laughs> if I sound like I'm talking fast, it, I did this last month, so I don't want to put everyone to uh, everyone to sleep here. But uh, essentially, um, the drawdown. The drawdown is uh, is coming back up, so we're we're starting to raise the dam. The dam is not all. I just I just actually went by it this morning, or this afternoon. So the dam is not all the way up yet, but it's on its way up. Um, 
as uh, you all probably know, the, our permits uh, mandates that the, the uh, water level is at normal pool, they call it, at, um, by April 1st. Some of that, after we raise the dam, is up to the universe to, uh, to provide for, because if we don't get rain, then you know, it's, it's, not, it's gonna come up a little bit slower. It seems to be coming up slower. We've, getting, we've got some uh, calls into um, uh, the town engineering department, and um, we heard some, some comments last night from uh, the folks at the rowing. I was at the, the coach's safety meeting for the rowers last night, so there was some comments that they'd like to get their dock in, but I think, I think that part's probably okay. Um, the dock, by the way, at DRC did need some repairs, and that's been done. So that's ready to go in. So that was, that's good. Um, so the drawdown's coming up. Uh, we have to go through the permits to make sure that we're on. Last year we got kind of caught, caught in the quick when we tried to do the drawdown part of it because our, our permit from Worcester had expired. And the city was uh, uh, um, graciously accommodated us and got the, got the uh, extension done. So uh, we appreciate that, but um, I wanna make sure that that does not happen again. And our permits are coming up for renewal. The last time we went for comprehensive uh, permits, I mean, like we actually had to apply and do all that, was in 2018. And we've gone through some extensions. Um, the, you know, the whole uh, pandemic thing helped us in, in that um, the, uh, the administration at the time in the state, you know, extended all the permits or, or, let, or laid it out so you could extend the permits more easy. So um, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, the update on the pilot plant study for natural heritage, for some reason we can't get natural heritage to respond to us. Um, I'm not throwing them under the bus. I'm sure that they're probably pretty busy. But right now, uh, what we, the two things that, that, are, that are most concerning to us at this point is being able to treat in, um, in areas of the water where, where we have an endangered uh, species habitat. That would be what they call zone B. And zone B, to define that um, without any visual to, to help me, is basically uh, from Kings Point, the Narrows, down um, to Route 20. That's all zone B. So uh, we have definitely found, I'm gonna say, um, that includes uh, South Bay, which is, and Half Moon. Uh, Bay, so Half Moon Bay, South Bay, um, uh, um, the uh, Round Pond, which is which is the the, the uh, northern half of Flint, in between Twenty and, and uh, the Stringer Dam, um, all there and all in front of Sunset Beach there. So, those areas of um, have are, are basically a habitat for Vasei. We actually found Vasei in the Old Faith Cove there, and we found. Uh, a narrow leaf Potomacetan that was not Vasei, but they looked the same to me, but um, it was not the same plant, and uh, that was in Half Moon Bay. We treated Half Moon Bay successfully with the chemical that we used, Procilicor, that Natural Heritage allowed us to do. That was good. Um, the, it did not kill the uh, Potomacetan, which was nice, and uh, we want to extend that. So that's why we need to talk to Natural Heritage. We want to extend um, that on so we can treat it at the Old Faith, because Old Faith has a lot of milfoil that we want to get rid of. Now, <clears throat> here's the challenge. Two things. One, the, 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 uh, the herbicide that we use at uh, both these sites that does not hurt the endangered <coughs> species. And Lieutenant, just for, we have an endangered species plant in the, in the lake. So it, it, it prevents us from treating with the normal uh, course of herbicides that we would use for some of the uh, invasive plants. We have about five or six active invasive plants in the lake right now. So when you hear people complain about weeds and all that stuff, that's what they're complaining about. Um, there is some uh, native or indigenous plants here in, in the lake that also can be a nuisance, um, but uh, we typically don't target those unless they become a really a nuisance. There's a couple on the, on the target list right now. But anyway, so the go back is um, we also have a very invasive, aggressive plant water chestnut, you've all heard us talk about that before. Um, the particular patch that we found last year in Round Pond is, was big. And we had volunteers to help us get it out there, but uh, anyone involved in that, and uh, uh, Kevin's not here today, but 
you know, the town had to come down there with a, with a dump truck and a front end loader to take all of the contractor bags and like 60, 70, how many contractor yeah, bags? Right? Yeah. 60 or 70 contract bags filled with this plant um, out of the lake. Wet, dirty, and you know, the people came out in their kayaks and paddle boards and rowboats. And uh, it was really kind of a cool thing that all the, the folks that came out and volunteered to pick these plants, um, and they're nasty. They got like spear points on the end of them, and uh, like you know, I got cut like in three different places fooling around with the things. So we got those out, but that's really at a point that we need to um, start to consider doing chemical treatments for beds of of, uh, of um, water chestnut that that big. The challenge is it's in zone B. So we're gonna to have to go back and, and ask uh, uh, Natural Heritage if that would be acceptable. The good news with that is that the particular chemical you use is called a thing called ClearCast, and ClearCast basically only works as a contact um, herbicide. And when I say contact herbicide, it literally has to touch the plant. So if you get it in the water, if it rains that day, it's not effective. So you gotta get it on top of the, the leaf uh, on, the, on the top of the water part of it to, uh, for it to work right. So that said, none of it's gonna get down to the bottom, or if it does, it's not gonna be dangerous to any plant, because it's just gonna dilute and be ineffective. So I think that we may, you know, we may have a, um, a chance to get them to let us do that particular uh, treatment there. So uh, the other thing is that the Old Faith Cove there's a lot of milfoil in Old Faith Cove, but there's also a plant called fanwort, which the prosilicor that we're using on the milfoil that doesn't hurt the, uh, I know this gets confusing, sounds like cat in a hat, that doesn't hurt the um, potamogeton uh, does not have any effect on fanwort. So we're gonna have to figure out whether that's a hand pull and, you know, we're, we've talked to the um, our resident uh, scientist there, uh, Jacqueline Burmeister, um, from the Worcester Lakes and Ponds program about that because she's had experience with <coughs> hand pulling and, and the uh, and um, the dash, which is kind of an assisted. It's, it's a vacuum like assisted hand pulling, and she says that part of it's not very effective. So we're going to have to um, keep an eye on that. But that's where we are, and that's why we we uh, have to kind of get back to natural heritage. When we uh, if we have to apply for any extensions, and I believe we will probably have to do that with the, at least the Worcester side that automatically triggers natural heritage, so they have to respond to us because we're um, going for an extension, so. Mr. Chairman, one, sure. one question, not related to that, but I, I don't see commissioner's reports on, on the agenda. They're down towards, they should be towards the bottom. And then but I, I, you know what, no. uh, Ken, I'm, I'm gonna move, right after I get through with this, I'll put, I'll go to that. Okay. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, the treatments on Lake Winsigman and Newton Pond, we're, we're working on those right now, um, trying to get, uh, we're, we're going to work with the city, um, Barbara from the, uh, the Water City Association, Jacqueline and I met, uh, last, I don't know when it was. A week ago? Two, a week ago. It was a two, uh, it was before the, uh, it was before the watershed meeting. And, uh, so we're trying to hash out what we're going to how we're gonna do that and how we're gonna pay for it. Um, so, or what Worcester's contribution is gonna be. Um, and we'll have more, more on that uh, on the next meeting. And um, update on the, and act on a proposal to draw down, the, for the draw down permits for Newton Pond. That right now is, is um, we're going through this uh, proposal project with um, ESS. So we'll have a better update on that next, uh, next point. Uh, as well. And the Grafton CPC project. Um, Mr. Chair, comment on that? Sure. Uh, since the project was finished at the end of last year, the final reports have came out several months ago. Uh, we've been asking for reports on it. Since it's over, I suggest we delete this item in the future. Okay. Agreed. Um, and then the last uh, point on this is to install two buoys at Kings Point. So um, I'd really like to get that done this year, one north and one south of the <coughs> Narrows. 
What do you think? Right now, I think last year we deployed seven. We had 17 buoys out there. Yeah. We're out. We're completely out. So on my report, I was re going to request that the commission um, fund purchasing more safety buoys because we don't have anything. If any of them um, <clears throat> go out of service, we have nothing to replace them right now. And I think... I think it was a little bit overkill at the North Quinsig ramp having three and three. I know it's slowed some people down, but to be honest with you, um, half the people ignored them. <clears throat> so, I mean, it's kind of tough to en enforce full time, but um, I think we do two on each side instead of three across the lake. At, uh, some of them, the lights were getting broken off people were damaging them, one was completely missing. So um, we definitely need a half a dozen more just in case if something happens and if you want us to put some out by King's Point. Okay. Um, so do you have do you have any idea, remember what, what the cost of those? I believe they're about $230 yeah. a piece. So about that. Okay. All right. I put money in the... Um, in the proposed budget, okay, to uh, to fund that because uh, I figured we're going to need more. We're going to yeah. need more buoys. I think we also have have, uh, have a I'm call it a totaled one over on the Flint Pond side too at the Route 20 bridge there. Okay, one of them just kept sinking and sinking, and the the neighbors, I you know, they they were we had two neighbors, uh, two butters there that that were really good all summer. They would they'd wait till it got down, so you, you know, just was that like that much out of the water, and they haul it out and bring it to the beach and drain it and put it back out then it lasts another three weeks and sink again so um i think that one's seen its last season um don't know what happened to that i i'm i fear it, it that also got bit damaged i don't think i don't know if it was on purpose or not but um, there were a couple that uh, were deliberately destroyed right this one looked like that and that's what the the butter said that they you know it looked like someone sliced it yep. um you know the, the the comment on the uh, Corazini ramp. I'm not opposed to to uh, you know putting less buoys out there. My concern, you know, two things. I, I thought it was fairly successful. You know, I've, I went out there and watched it, and mm -hmm. you know, it, and um, it did seem to slow people down. And I think it's one of those things that they got to get used to doing it. Some of it will be a you know a carrot and a stick too. I mean, we, I guess we have to enforce it when we see someone. Um, especially on busy days when there's people at the ramp. I mean, that's really what the buoys were for, to kind of mm -hmm. calm things down at that stage. Uh, so that's good. You know, I don't know what we can do about people sabotaging, like, <coughs> town property, and, you know, you, you obviously have to catch them doing it, so that's, that's the challenge. <coughs> right but it just seems... Um, and... Uh, I, don't, I know that there's cameras on DR, on the DRC building. Is that, anyone know if that's true or not? I they don't know if they to face be. to the water though. I'm not sure I think if it's just the parking there, lot. But they, none of them point out at the water. I, they all one used to point, point at the docks facility? and one pointed at the boat sheds. Okay, one point at the docks? Uh, yeah, going okay. down in towards the water, but not out on the water. The other okay. one pointed at the boat sheds. They don't record at all, do they? They don't? So it's just live. Uh, is that does the town own that? Or is that QRA? QRA. QRA. Yeah, you should, guys should upgrade to the recording ones. <laughs> just a thought. Put a doorbell on. Okay. <laughs> Put some rings up. Okay. Mr. Chair, question on the buoys before sure. we move on. Yeah. Does that price that was just quoted is that just for the buoys, or does that include the anchor, the cabling, and everything to keep them in place? The the rope that we use and. Well, we've been using uh, center blocks that Ken provides. The police department's been paying for the for the rope for that, so unless it should should go under the lake when yeah, it should. So, yeah. um, if we get approved to get a half half a dozen, although I have to order more rope too. So, okay. And second uh, was more of a comment that uh, members of the uh, Quinsigman Quint Rowing Club have. Uh, commented that yes not all the boats are slowed down but it does slow down a good percentage of them and and they appreciate that okay that's good um yeah i spent some time over there because i was doing some work on the uh, worcester side of it 
And, um, you know, it got, like you said, not everybody's slowing down. Some people go by. And the other funny part is some people's idea of slowing down and other, you know, and my idea of slowing down for no wake is two different things. If you're going, if you slow down to 14 miles an hour, you're literally making a bigger, the biggest wake your boat can probably make because the tail end is <coughs> in the water. So um, when people are driving forward, they're not looking, this, you know, that's the challenge that no one looks at their wake. So they don't understand what the, what the, uh, what the damage they're doing is, and that's where it's coming from. So all you folks at home, um, no wake means like six miles an hour. It's basically just underway, just so you can steer the boat and keep the wake flat as possible. There's always going to be a little ripple coming off of, of a runabout for sure, but um, you, know, you really want to be able to uh, you know, stop that from um, you know, moving around any boats while they're trying to load them or unload them off, on or off a trailer. So, um, so that would be good. But uh, do you want to take a – how many do you think you need? I'd like to have – I'd like to – somebody make a motion to order six more. Okay, six more, and that's so, that, and that will cover. That would cover. Um, we'll cover everything and give us a bank in case we need. Yeah, so uh, that'll give me some spares. Okay, so the two at Kings Point, and then the one at Oak Island. I mean, sorry, the Route 20 ramp, the Route 20 bridge. For yeah. Kings Point, do you want them north and south of? King's yes. point. Okay. One on the north, one because on the south. Because there's not a lot of room there for people to come through as it is. So, Right. Okay. That's the point. We want them to slow down. Yep. That's why I, I want to put the buoys up there. Okay. So, um, But I, want to put, I don't want to put them in King's Point. I want to, you know, I'm like yep. on, the, on the outside of the point and on not quite as big of a range we have at Corazini. Yeah, I'll do, I'm going to do 50 yards each way or 25 yards each yeah, way. Yeah, give, give them some time to slow down because that's the other thing. If you put them inside the, the narrow, yeah. by the time they slow down, they're through it. It's only no problem. 30 feet. Okay. Thanks, uh, John. So, Mr. Chair, can I make a proposal that the uh, commission uh, finance the s six buoys then as so uh, proposed by uh, Officer uh, Valier? Okay. So, um, at, a, at a number not to exceed $2,500, would that make sense? In case they went up, and we're putting rope and mm -hmm. um, okay. cinder blocks. I just donate those. Okay, thank you. So, um, is that, can we, uh, yeah, that I'd like motion. that inclu included in my proposal. Okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, Okay, funding and proposed budget. I'm going to put this also to the side. I, I, will, I will say this about the, uh, the budget, the, um, cause I, I want to get some more, um, some firmer input from uh, some, of the, some of our funding sources. I have, I think, pretty much what we're going to do for expenditures, which is going to be right around $175,000 or so uh, with weed treatments and um, the buoys and some other uh, some other things that we uh, we have, so um, we did get uh, um, uh, Senator Moore has put in a a request in the state budget for an appropriation for the Lake Commission for forty thousand dollars. Whether we get that or not, um, I'm not sure yet. But it's in the it's in the uh, you know it's 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 on the list of things. So hopefully. We'll get that. He did that about, uh, I think it was back in uh, 2017, where we got a, you know, we put in for 40,000, we got 20. I'm hoping we'll get the whole 40 this time. Um, and um, we are in the warrant uh, for Shoesby Town Meeting. So Shoesby's going to contribute, I think it's, I think the money in there is like $30,000. Some of that is um, earmarked marked for um, Jordan Pond and Dean Park Pond. And as well as Jordan Pond, sorry, as well as Newton Pond. So there's some other, an old mill, sorry, an old mill pond. So, um, but you know, typically we get, you know, we, we'll, you know, the, the straight part, the Lakeman Sigma is going to be probably around twenty thousand dollars. So we got we got that going, and um, I'm not sure what Grafton is going to do. So we probably need to talk about. Yeah, the only thing uh, definitive is the 5K from the Conservation Commission. 
Okay. That's that's come that's co coming again this year. Yes, should be. Okay, so that's good, and um, and I think actually it's fair. So, uh, and uh, we like I said, we're still trying to work it out with Worcester. I think Worcester is going to be a combination of of uh, possibly some money and some in kind work. Um, you know, one of the things we struggled with <coughs> last year was getting the the permits and the bids out and all that stuff because it was just really complicated. Um, when we when we did, redid the uh, the permits in, in 2018, one of the things we wanted to do was was you know it, it, before that it, we had one chemical on the permit. It was diquat. It treated milfoil, and uh, it was a very effective chemical for milfoil. The problem is it didn't do anything to fanwort, um, you know, to the curly leaf pondweed and all the other stuff that we had in the lake that we needed to, to treat. So um, we wanted to add more things on there. But when we did that. Um, you know, it just made the bidding process a little bit more complicated because, you know, what are we using for this particular area? How many, um, you know, how many acres is, are we going to treat and, and whatnot? So it got a little bit more complicated and it, and it kind of uh, choked us on the bidding process, which, which caused us to, to kind of come out late with treatments last year. We're trying to avoid that this year. So uh, Jacqueline, I know, is going to help us, and she's been very helpful as far as giving us guidance on, on uh, you know, what we should be looking at and kind of steering us in the right direction. So that's good. And um, there may be a chance, and I don't want to tell stories out of school yet because I'm not really sure what's going on, but there may be a chance that Worcester will actually participate in um, one of the treatments directly from the city. So they'll actually take it over. The city's got some some funky um, rules with as, as far as like paying out stuff, and they the commission isn't technically a vendor, so they can't give us money. Um, I'm not really sure why we can't be a vendor. Uh, we changed the charter because that was the first thing they, they were concerned about, and so was the town of Shrewsbury. And we changed the charter, and the town of Shrewsbury was fine with it, um, but we couldn't get Worcester to, to, uh, to go that way. But it doesn't matter, in, in my mind, if they <coughs> decide, okay, we're going to treat the milfoil at... Uh, you know, um, at Half Moon Bay, then great. They can pull the permit and, uh, no, sorry, we already have the permit. They can, they can uh, do the bid and go and treat it. I, th I believe as long as we're okay with it, and this is something I guess we've got to go through CONCOM to figure out, is if someone who's not on the permit can do the application. See, not the application. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. We'll, can do the treatment. So that's what I, I, I do have a, um, I have had a discussion with, a, um, with a, is it Leah or Alea? Leah. Alea. Alea? All right, so I've had a discussion with our, with our new conservation agent here in Shrewsbury, so um, I know she's looking into that. Any questions? Okay. Um, Number 10? And then, uh, no, just one more thing on the, on the budget I don't want to... Oh, and there's also the dock plates. And one of the things that we could use uh, some help from uh, law enforcement is that you guys have the list. Um, You'll have to see Cindy about that. I know. I, so uh, I, asked, I asked her to, to change it. I know that, uh, I forgot it was Mike O'Connor, Mike Vitos, it was Mike O'Connor that told me they're getting a new system. Yeah, we are. Because the one, cause the one in the, that you had was back when, I don't know, when they built the building, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't easy to get information out of it. So uh, hopefully we can get that. But that is going to help us because what this year I'd like to go back, and I know in the past we've had problems enforcing the whole play thing even after we ticketed them. So, um, and I'm, I, you know, I'd rather not have you guys waste your time going around checking docs out when there's way more, uh, you know, dangerous things that need your attention out there. So. We're going to try to find out what that is and kind of come back with a list and turn around and, and come that way. So that's that. All right, before we go to item number 10, I want to uh, do the commissioner's reports. So I've talked <coughs> enough. My voice is getting scratchy. Ken, okay, uh, last night we had the uh, Conservation Commission meeting. We talked to the people at Tamarack Lane regarding their dock. Um, we asked them to remove or try to remove what they put into the lake. Told them it can't have any permanent structures in the lake. 
So they're going to look in to see what they can do to resolve the issue. Okay. So, um, and that's, uh, I guess that's fine. It, it, um, it really doesn't trigger us, although we could push back and say, you know, you didn't tell us you were doing what you did. Well, the, doc was, I, the doc was there. And the doc was there. I don't think they changed the foot. They didn't change anything. It, yeah. it just that the just doc put legs was, on it. It was in disrepair. It was falling into the water. Right. So he propped it up in, right. in a fashion probably that isn't the best. So he's going to look into doing something. Different. Okay. So at this point right now, we don't, <clears throat> that doesn't trigger us to do anything. If they come out of compliance with conservation, then they're out of compliance with us. Yeah, correct. Right? So, I believe so. Yes. Well, that's, I think that's the first rule of the doc thing is that you got to, you got to have you got to be you got to be straight so they with came, the, they came in we, we talked to the to the owners they were very receptive they were going to try and figure something out and do the best they could okay all right so if something changes we'll we'll let you know all right thank you all right um okay so our favorite uh Line item every year is review and act on raising the dock fees for 2023. Um, just to kind of bring you up to speed, Lieutenant, is that we when we we went we went to the town manager Dan Magata at the time and asked for an appropriation from the town. The first thing he asked us was, well, how much are people paying for dock fees? So um, I, you know, we, we discussed that and I told him at the time and he kind of balked at it and said, you know, that's ridiculous and it's not enough money. And so um, the deal we, you know, the deal with the devil we agreed to was that we would bring the dock fees up to the level, um, you know, incrementally that we were at with the, with, with the appropriations from the other uh, sources. So, you know, essentially he wanted us to be even if the town's kicking in thirty thousand dollars, they want the lake commission to be kicking in thirty thousand dollars. The only funding we get directly is from the dock fees and uh, some uh, regatta events. So um, that's kind of where we where we go. So traditionally, we've been raising them up five bucks a year till we get to the uh, we get to the point where we are, you know, where we don't need to raise them anymore, and then we'll kind of level off and go with that until we, you know. Um, all of that money goes in back into the lake. Uh, so it's not like it's, you know, we're taking it and, you know, buying Lake Commission cars or anything like that with it. We're just basically putting it back into the, into the uh, water body. And, um, you know, by treating the weeds, by doing the permitting and, and um, <coughs> buying buoys and, and whatnot, you know. We'd contribute to law enforcement if we had enough, but. We, we don't. So, um, so that's where we are. So I guess uh, that's what I'm looking for is a raise it up another five dollars. Any comments? Yeah, I mean, do I, I would like uh, if we could take a pause on that for a year. I mean, you've, we've raised these fees uh, many years in a row. And I think with the economic climate and the way things are today, I think we should take a pause and look at it, reconsider it next year. Okay. Um, I guess, um, you know, my comment, I'm not sure why we want to do that. And, and, and I'm not sure what the economic conditions you're referring to. You, the economic conditions? Correct. Everything has gone up, gas, food, taxes, Everything. So why do we have? I would just take a pause. Well, because everything's going up, treatments, <clears throat> buoys, all the stuff we do. So I mean, we're we're caught in the same dilemma as everyone else. That mean doesn't mean we have to follow suit and raise up. We can take a break. That's just my opinion. We have many other people on the board. Right. Sure. Right. Have a discussion. A comment? Yes. Uh, I believe it was either three or four years ago when we decided uh, that we would raise it up a certain amount each year, which turned out to be $5 mm -hmm. instead of one big lump sum. 
the major discussion point that came up and, and was tossed back and forth for a while was that what creates problems with people not getting their dock fees and uh, really problems for law enforcement is when we skip it or a couple of years and then have to put a big jump in or if we just decide to put a big jump in that creates more problems with people deciding that they're going to forget to do it. If we continue on this process, which we started three years ago, $5 every, every year, it'll probably not disturb the system as much and create other problems for law enforcement. Uh, the second point I want to make is my understanding of this was just a little different from what you said. What the $5 increase on the regular dock fee we uh, creates a certain percentage increase. We use the same percentage increase as that calculated for the commercial docks. So the commercial docks actually went up by the same percentage amount, which was more than $5. I don't know. Did they actually? I don't think they did. I thought we, we this is just my recollection that we, that we turned around and raised those up five bucks through. Oh. That's what, I think that's how we did that. Okay. I think we, we, did, we, went, we stuck on $5 because the percentage was. My done. recollection is purely of what we decided, not was it was actually done. Okay. I thought that's what it was. What's the current fee right now? 45, I believe, for the regular dock. I think it's 95 for the. It is 45 105, for residential I think. and 105 for commercial. At yeah, 105. Okay, thank you. Do you have any idea what it was in 2021? I'm going to pull that up in a minute. <laughs> okay, thanks. I'm looking at some of the old minutes real quick. Thanks. Um, I just want to get to what, what the, you know, how, how far we went up in the commercial. I can predict it was $40 and 21 for the residential part of it. <clears throat> the other thing we haven't, um, I mean, I, and I think the other, th the other thing we need to do and, you know, uh, is to crack down on, this, on the scoff laws that aren't paying for the docks at all. So, and I, again, I, I know that, uh, I, think, I forgot how long ago it was, but I, these guys went out and they, they basically wrote up every dock. That was, that was. Uh, yeah, it was 60 docks at that time, and that's what brought up the original discussion was right. that if we decided to bring it up to what the town wanted, we'd be more than doubling the dock fee. Right. And instead of having 60 uh, scoff laws, they might have 120 or 180. Right. I can, I can um, say from just, you know, going around Flint Pond, my neck of the woods, that there's probably 70% of the docks over there are not plated, or don't, either they're plated <coughs> or a current sticker on it. That doesn't mean they don't have a current sticker. It just means it's not on the dock, which, is the rule. The rule is that not if you have a sticker, you don't have a sticker, it has to be on the dock. And you can have a boat parked on it. 2021 fees were $40 residential and 100 for commercial. So we, we went were up both raised by five, five bucks. Five bucks, okay, that's what I thought. All right, all right. Okay. Um, I guess that's where we are. Do you wanna do a motion or? Any, oh, sorry, is there any other comments or questions? I made my comments. All right. Is there a motion? To raise them in. No, well, I'll, I'll make a motion that we continue the uh, uh, tradition we started three years ago of raising the dock fees by $5 a year. All right. Both commercial and residential. So the, so the motion is going to be to raise dock fees to $50 residential and 110 for commercial, correct? Correct. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. So we got, Sorry. let's do a count. I'm going to do a voice thing. No. Okay. No? No. Oh. Aye. 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 All right. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Okay. So. So about it. Thanks for listening. All right. Um, update from Jacqueline Burmeister. She's not here. I can give it to you. Oh, perfect. Um, as I so 
In March, they did the State of the Lakes for the 2022 sampling season. Alyssa, one sec, and I hate to make you do this, but I'm not sure, I don't, I don't know if Liz can spray water out of my mic or something and let me know if I'm right or wrong, but um, I'm not sure if, the if they can hear you on, on the recording from back there. Okay. So could you, is it possible to come up? Yeah, no, I can. Thanks. <laughs> let me bring my computer with me. Um, so in March, Jacqueline did her Stay the Lakes report. Um, it is now available, I believe on YouTube, it's available as a recording. Um, and that was the 2022 sampling season. And they are starting to ramp up for the Worcester Cyanobacteria Monitoring Collaborative. They're going to have a training session virtually Wednesday, April 12th. You can sign up on um, Eventbrite for that. So they're looking for more volunteers. You can sign up for a lake, all that fun stuff, like myself and Chairman Collins did last year for the cyanobacteria monitoring. Um, I think that's it. For us, yeah. you know, um, experienced citizen scientists. Yes. Do, do we need to go to the training again? Um, I think it's more just go and listen to it. Okay. Yeah. And then... Because they, they there give may us our or may stuff not be there too. Get the tube us. and the official. Yeah. No, we don't have to like go and manually do it, but you can go and sign up for your lake or spot. Oh, okay. It's it's kind of an update meeting. As okay. Well. All right. Perfect. Is that was that it? That was it. Oh, okay. She didn't tell me anything else. <laughs> she usually is like there for like twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I condense it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Everyone appreciates that. Um, and uh, update from the representative of the Lake Quinn Sigmund Watershed Association. Hello, my name is Gia Coleman. I work with Barbara and Mike for the Watershed Association. And you just have to join the Google Meet. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Let me find it. Now, I use this microphone on my laptop, right? No. Now there's a microphone right in front of you. Right. Oh, okay. And, and I want to... Once you join and I give you permission, I can give you permission. Okay, let me, let me get set up for <laughs> one second. Yeah, technology. <laughs> Thank you. I know. Oh, no. It's making me log in again. My apologies. And I have to, of course. I have to authenticate, my apologies. While she's getting set up, do you want to approve the rowing events? Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, do we, do we have this, do you have the schedule, Joe, or, Joe, or, or Patrick? That we, that we need to do? You want to talk about the summer or that's the summer? Because we already have a program. Yeah. Well, uh, we didn't have quorum last time, so I think we also need to approve the spring. I know, just for the record. And then we also have the July one. Yeah. Is there well, another uh, one besides that? I'm sorry. That's it. The, uh, the spring one's in October. Oh, yep. You're right. The spring ones are approved, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They did that with the October meeting. Yep. So it's the July 30th uh, Masters event. That That's correct. That's we the only one we unable, We discussed it last meeting, but we were unable to vote on it because we did not have a quorum. Correct. That is correct. All right. So um, I know we sent the packets out last week. I'm Joe May from the Worcester Boat Club, 790 Pleasant Street in Worcester. Um, Harry is in Costa Rica, apparently. He informed me of that today, so good for him. But um, mm. yeah, our regatta is July 30th. and. Um, we intend on racing between 8 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. on Sunday, July 30th. 
will have half of Regatta Point Park. Everything will run out of Regatta Point at that uh, <coughs> per our request. And there should be about 125 participants at the max. Okay. And uh, you, you, and the, the, the standard permit stuff that we have in the permit, open lane. Um, that is correct. As defined, we will have a reverse pattern. We'll right. go up to the start line, which will be at uh, about the 1,000-meter mark up near the gazebo uh, at Eastern Point. Mm -hmm. And everything will terminate at the finish line at, at Regatta Point. Okay. We'll, keep, we'll maintain an open lane for, <coughs> for travel. Uh, uh, up and down, up in and between down. heats. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. But on the other side, on the Shrewsbury side, we'll allow boats to be there. We'll have police and uh, fire on the water, EPO on the water, okay. all time. And, yet, and we have all those permits. You, you do have all right. that, yes. Okay. And no ramp closure, correct? No ramp closure. No, we, we ha we're in process of getting the EPO permits. We wanted to set this date first before okay. we pull that. All right. So this is the first, this is the primary one for us. Once we do that, we'll we'll secure all those, which will be with the DCR. Okay. There you go. Aliens. Um, the date was July what? July thirtieth. It's a Sunday 30th. morning. Okay. July thirtieth, Sunday morning. All right. Uh, any questions, comments from the board? You got it. Okay. Is there a motion? Make a, make a motion that we oh. approve the regatta, Masses Regatta on July 30th, uh, sponsored by uh, the Regatta Point Boat Club and the Kuhn Sigerman uh, Boat Club. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good to go. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thanks for, com thanks for coming back. Um, so, uh, how are we making out, Gia? Are you able to uh, hit present? I think so. I just want to make sure I got my notes up here. Um. This A that's on the screen in front of me just keeps reminding me of Alvin. All right. I haven't started Chipmunks. sharing my samples yet. I mean, my, my presentation yet. I've, I see the word sampling, I say it like a one trick pony. Okay. Um, so all I have to do now is share my screen, I believe. <clears throat> but my notes are not showing up, so. Do you see me? Am I good on your end? Yeah. Does anyone by chance know how to? There's like a box at the bottom with an up arrow. The up arrow, well no, the, to see the notes on a PowerPoint? Like usually shows up. You can do presenter mode. Show presenter view. Oh, you're an angel. Well, Just you make sure you share your screen. Angels. So that an angel. <laughs> yep. All righty. So share the screen. I don't know who I should be speaking to. This will leave people. Okay. So you guys are going to have a nice new audio video <laughs> system. We are. Oh. We won't have these problems. It'll just, it'll just work. Okay, here we go. Mark series. Yay. <laughs> Not really, but theoretically, <laughs> somebody, somebody will know how to run it. <laughs> yeah. See. Yeah. See, I want it to be. No, oh, that's okay. So it should be able to show my notes up there, or not show my notes up there. I but think you're in happening. presenter mode now, right? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So we're just going to do hide presenter view, and we're just going to start from the beginning. All right. Okay. Perfect. Can you see me okay? Hear me okay? All right. So myself, Gia Coleman, and I work with Barbara Kickham and Mike Liberty. We are the three amigos when it comes to bacteria sampling in Lake Quinsig. Uh, what we do is we um, go out every year and we sample the tributaries. So that's the main focus of, of who and what. 
Um, we also partner with the Lake Quinn Sigmund Communication uh, Commission, and also uh, Jackie Burmeister, who we consult often. Uh, very kin like to us with a DPW, Lakes and Ponds. Um, our main goals are to sample locations found around the lake for E. coli um, from the tributaries. We have eight sample sites and we have two midpoint sample sites, which help give us a good diverse um, assessment when we do sample and test. Um, we analyze the results and then we send them to um, mass surface water quality standards. We submit them to the D DEP every year and we also report that to the aforementioned LQC and DPW. And it is a public surface. Um, a very nice one, I would say. Um, our sampling procedure, we go out every year, we take 10 samples um, at 10 sites. So we go, we try to go every two weeks. Sometimes we hit three weeks, sometimes we hit three and a half. Um, we do collect all other types of data as well. We collect actual bacteria that we um, can hire with um, another, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the whole tech thing kind of got me a little. Mm -hmm. We work with Alpha Analytical and that is, the, that is our laboratory. That's who checks that side. And then we also do imaging um, we do videos and we use that data to compare what we see during the sampling season and also between other sampling seasons, which this year will be our fourth sampling season. So we're very proud about that. Um, let's see. We do have a, qual um, a quality assurance project plan, which has been approved. This is our third edition with the help of uh, Mike, Barbara, and Jackie. We have been able to update it quite easily. So that way we keep all of our data quality still at that top tier because that is also one of our main goals too is to provide data quality. Um, oh, the fun part, okay. So we have, we kind of split it up between North and South Basin. Um, we have six sample sites in the North Basin. Kind of works out, you know, well. Um, then we have four sample sites in the South Basin. And I don't know if you guys can see this okay, but <clears throat> they're pretty, they're, they're spread, out, spread out pretty evenly, but also the main focus is to have them at the tributary. So these are sites that we know about for um, years. We've been you know, studying impermeable surfaces. We wanna make sure if there's developments or whatever characteristic it might be, when all of the <coughs> water coming from the city is coming into the lake, we wanna test it. And this is pretty much the, the extent to which we test. Um, the North Basin, we have Coal Mine Brook, which is one of my favorites. Um, it's the, probably the largest outfall we have. Um, it takes that really good part of Worcester and all of that storm drain water that comes in, so we test it there. We have Tilly's Brook, which comes from Shrewsbury, um, a very unique spot um, in addition. We have UMass Outfall, um, we are no longer testing UMass outfall every year because it has been consistently within compliance with the standard. Um, so we're going to start testing that every three years. And we have Belmont Street outfall, which has been, I would say, the spring breaker of the, of the sample locations. So <laughs> The opposite of the... Yes. Um, in compliance. But it's, it's, it's also nice because we get to see the beginning of the, you know, the Bourne Bridge. So it's really, really kind of a nice spot. South Basin, we have my favorite, Meadow Brook, which is a, a wetland. It's a marshland. There's a lot of protection, conservation in that area. Um, we have Fitzgerald's Brook, which is surprisingly an underground tunnel that goes up to Anna Street, which I had no idea until I saw a tree stuck in it once. Um, and we have O'Hara Brook, so that's right by the old Whitla um, pumping station. Uh, the 2022 sampling season, we had our third intern, uh, Jung Yo Batino. She was a senior at Worcester State. Um, this is a paid internship, and she also received course credits. So not only are we doing so much with this lake, we're actually kind of dragging the community into it, which is pretty cool. Um, unique events. So like I said before, this is an image of Coal Mine Brook. Um, 
it was consistently under the exceedance threshold. Um, and we also have, I have precipitation up here just to kind of show what precipitation looked like last year as well. Because after a big rain event, we do have seen, uh, we have, you know, made some correlations between high counts and precipitation. Um, this, a lot of data, so I apologize in advance, but this is basically what everything looks like um, for data. All of our um, exceedances, where they belong to, and it also kind of gives you a little snapshot of what the standard looks like too for the water quality. Um, it's a new standard, so we, but previously we were doing um, an average, if you will, called a geometric mean, and that was looking at the, the past five samples and doing an average with those. Now we do 30 days, so they've kind of overlapped. So you'll have two sampling days that are in a month. If those two sample days are 30 apart, we'll take the average of that, then the second and third, third and fourth, fourth and fifth, and so on and so forth. And what we found was that there were a lot of um, sample locations that were not in, compliant, in compliance. So this is a really good visual for anybody who's, who has any questions about it. We're happy to answer. But the new standard this year is um, 410 CFUs per 100 milliliter as opposed to the 235 as it was before. And then the geometric mean that we talked about, that hasn't changed. It's just the time um, element that has, 5 to 30. Um, let's see. The sample sites with no bacteria exceduses, we had three. It was UMass, the North Basin Midpoint, and the South Basin Midpoint. Um, so that's why UMass is no longer going to be tested every year. And then um, our main heavy hitters in Belmont Street, Coal Mine Brook, Billings, Tillys, O'Hara, Fitzgerald's, and Meadow Brook. Meadow Brook kind of barely got, got in there, but it did have one exceedance, which put it into that, that category. Um, this is a really good graph of the, the way that each sample, each sample site looked as we were traveling through the season. So you have every graph, every, every um, column represents a sampling day. And then you can also, if you can, glance up at the right and you'll be able to see maybe some trends when we had precipitation where some of those um, counts happened and why. And there's a good way to, to kind of make that data connect in life. Um, I grouped the North and South Basins here so you can kind of see how that um, data looks, like what was going on with the lake in those kind of like controls, like they're not really a tributary, but they're the extent of the tributary. So they're the most farthest out something could possibly reach. <clears throat> um, and then here we go. I have a few slides. I condensed some of them um, to show what the counts were and then where they were in reference to the threshold. <coughs> and this is also the new threshold, the 410. So you can see UMass barely even touching it at some points of the sampling season. Uh, Belmont Street and Coal Mine Brook, you can see where they're over exceedance, not compliant, if you will. Uh, Billings had a very unique exceedance. There was one spike in August and then another good spike in September, which is relatively late in the season. Uh, Tilly's and Meadowbrook. Uh, Tilly's was was kind of really riding low, well under exceedance, and then at the same time we saw that August in a bunch of other sites too, we, we saw the same spike. Meadowbrook, barely making it over exceedance in September, and then O'Hara, kind of looking like um, you can see here like Billings, and then you see Whitla, O'Hara, kind of resembling. This graph is a three-year plot diagram of, you'd have to look very closely, but it is color-coded, so it's easy for you to see kind of what each sample site 
looks like in each year. Um, that's a, de definitely dedicate a nice cup of tea and a quiet environment should you decide to look, but, but it is a very good graph to show you what the lake looked like for three consecutive years. So we're very excited to have that data. But the most important, I think, image on this screen right now is to look at the geo means and look at our, I like to, I like to consider them our heavy hitters, um, the ones that we send to title fights, if you will. They are the ones that are, they're very, the same ones that have very similar counts. So it's good to, to really have data to back up for what tributary to keep an eye on, kind of maybe even take another granular approach of how do we want to assess this, these particular sites? Do we want to look at tertiary data? Do we, you know, so it, it's inviting in that way. Um, so some of our very interesting findings that we found over the past three years um, we've had residential complaints of odors and appearances at Belmont, Coal Mine, Brook, and Tillys, and those three happen to be areas that have high exceedances. Uh, Lake Ave Pumping Station, uh, SS overflows, SSOs. Um, we had one last year. We had stormwater discharge from shopping area right near uh, Billings, so that plaza. We've seen there were two, maybe even three, I think there was three cyanobacteria events that we saw. We couldn't really get it out, but we we did um, reach out to Jackie to let her know that we saw it. So now we can establish like a baseline of data to where this is happening. And we saw a lot of it last year. Well, t two events for sure. Um, there's a little bit of trash buildup in the middle, great blockage at Belmont Street, but DPW has been uh, good about sending people out, cleaning it. Um, Beaver Dam, there's a Beaver Dam upstream in Meadow Brook, and there's also a Beaver Dam, I think, at Billings Brook, like right before that. <laughs> Barbara. I don't think there's one. There's, there's, we have an ongoing argument. <laughs> we do. It's just a lot of foliage. Yeah, there is no wood, I would say, but there is one at Meadow Brook, um, and that was reported by DPW Shrewsbury. Um, we've, we do see a lot of recreational activities. We do see a lot of trash. However, there's an angel that goes to Brown Beach and picks up most of that trash. Um, is that Bill? Bob? Neighbors are here yeah, to clean up there. Yeah, there's, there's one, one volunteer and specifically that really does a good job um, going out there like every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Um, the intern last year, Jung Yo, she did notice that there was a lot of construction um, near the Belmont Street area. So we kind of looked at it. We actually did find some reports. Um, there's been some, you know, thoughts on it, but I think it's just rainwater. I think it's just precipitatory of precipitation events. Um, but then there's also construction uh, to the park adjacent to the coal mine brook. So these are all things that are, are unique. Um, this year, one of our most important findings is, you know, a new impermeable surface at the Route 20 cutoff near Market Basket. That whole new parking lot just came in. So that is going to be another tributary that we actually have decided in the watershed we're going to start testing it. That is going to be another sample location. Um, as I mentioned before, impermeable surfaces, it's just basically an influx of water um, and if there's, you know, fertilizers, anything, we want to we wanna keep that, you know, that area nice and clean, clean as we can possibly get it. Um, let's see. So that's at Flip Pond. Um, that's going to be a very interesting site. We're going to go probably do a preliminary check um, of it sometime in May. And then we'll just kind of go from there. Does anybody have any questions so far? No? Excellent. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I, I do. I have uh, two questions on separate subjects. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you. You seem to be doing a wonderful job on the lake and its tributaries. But uh, my two questions are uh, going a little beyond this excellent job that's being done on the tributaries and lakes. Uh, so my first question is, uh, there are groups in the Blackstone Valley that test the water in Lake Quinsigamon. I'm thinking of the water flowing out of the lake now. And also other groups sponsored uh, by the Blackstone Valley Association that uh, 
test the water in Uxbridge where West River and the Blackstone and the Quinsigamon meet. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just wondering, is there any comparison done by anybody between the data that is collected on Lake Quinsigamon and the data that's collected downstream to see if there's any correlations in what is observed? Um, we are always on the hunt for for data, but Barbara's going to weigh in on this because she's my muscle. No. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me over there. Um, we, um, the, so the Blackstone River Coalition does different sampling. They're not, they were sampling at uh, Poor Farm Brook, but because we took over, they said we're not going to because they have limited resources. So we haven't really been comparing because they're doing um, a, a lot of other um, analyses. Um, in all of the data goes to DEP. And they're using it to assess the waters. Um, so. Okay, so the, the essentially it's the data is sort of it has some sense of incompatibility for comparison purposes. Second question, moving on then. Uh, we have discussed at, at, at these meetings in the last several years on and off, and, 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 and nothing definitive has ever come out about it, but it's been brought up that when we do have these events in the lake where there's contamination, there's a question of whether it's due to the geese flocks on the lake, whether it's due to humans because there's a sewer overflow out of Worcester, for example, which we've had a couple, or whether we've had a big rainstorm and all the dog's feces that are washed down through the drainage system into the tributaries and leaks. So I'm just wondering, can you comment on any more thought has been given into the, this idea of doing DNA testing on these outbreaks to conclude whether the problem is dogs, humans, or geese, because that makes it much easier to treat the, the real part of the problem rather than trying to treat all three at once. That has been a, a topic of our, um, our meetings and not even outside of our meetings on a daily basis. Mike, do you want to weigh in? Because I know <coughs> you're very, very passionate. Sure. Yeah, we're, um, we do want to do that. Yeah. Um, it's, t it's a matter of a timing thing. So you collect the sample, you have to collect the sample for the DNA, and it's just, like when you get a sample bottles from Alpha, they're free, basically. You pay for the analysis, you don't pay for the bottles. But for this DNA sample, you pay for the bottles, and it's very expensive, and you pay for the analysis. So we have to do it at the same time, basically collect the sample for bacteria, collect the sample for DNA, mail it off. And so it's, we just haven't done it, because it's very, it is a lot of money. Um, we think that the majority of the, uh, the sources is animal. Could be we don't know if it's raccoon, we don't know if it's dog or whatever, but it's primarily probably animals. Would be nice to know if there was a sewer leak, if we could do you know find out if it was human. Um, but that's that's what's been kind of holding us up. We were hoping to do it um, two summers ago at O'Hara because it was very consistently really high, and then Jackie went out and did one sample, and it ended up being very low the time that she did it. So it's really it's difficult, but we'd like to do that. Okay. Well, I want to congratulate you. You're thinking about both of these important topics, and you've an done some uh, approaches towards seeing how to do it. So uh, I appreciate that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for saying that. That was very, very um, thoughtful. Um, so in addition to the testing of Flint Pond, the top the very top of Flint Pond, we're also going to add another, um, we're going to kind of make a swap for the UMass one and test at the Lake Ave pumping station. <coughs> so figured we can, you know, all hands on deck with, with that one. <laughs> um, so we'll have, we, previously we had 10 sample locations and now we'll have 11 with the exception of the one year where we do test um, for UMass outfall. But other than that, um, it's been a, a pleasure. Okay, um, that, that it was excellent, Gia. Thank you. Um, and you know, I, I I totally agree with Bill. Is that this is I think one is an important program, um, and we should be doing it and expanding it. And two, that uh, you know, you guys have done a really really good job um, getting this. I mean, you know, the the, the quap part of it. Which is basically the um, standards that you have to meet. You know that's that's an important thing, and it's it's good that we we have that experience now after these three years that, that uh, you know we can take this on ourselves. So the the watershed is uh, 
you know, has always been a tremendous help to the to Lake Quinn Sigerman. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, fantastic. You know, I, I, I just remembered I kind of skipped over everybody else's reports. Mike, do you have a report? Um, Lake it seems to be about four to six inches from being back at level. Um, I've heard somebody has seen the eagles flying around. I was out on the lake today and looked at the nest, and I couldn't see any eagle sitting in the nest, but the nest is substantial, and it's possible female eagle may be sitting on some eggs in there, but I could not, nor have I witnessed any bald eagles flying about the lake, but I have heard that somebody has seen them. So uh, let's hope they're still uh, nest, they're nesting on the lake, but who knows. Uh, the turbidity uh, relative to the recent rain and northeast, uh, the northeaster we had, uh, it's it, the lake's a little bit turbid, but um, it's rising too. So, and that's that's all I have in the report. I was, and it was most unusual not to have a winter where there was not safe ice on the lake. I've never seen that in decades. Uh, yeah. So it was quite quite a uh, different uh, uh, winter season on the lake. There was no snowmobilers, no ice skating, no ice fishing. It was. Uh, <clears throat> totally different than what I've seen for decades. So. No, two years Thank ago, you, the whole mm -hmm. thing froze. It, yeah. Remember that? It was beautiful. And mm -hmm. I do. I, I skated over to your house. You did? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so most unusual. But that's, that's cool. it for my report, Let's go. Mr. Chair. I think the Eagles move all to Blake Island, so they're going to have to shut that thing down. <laughs> uh, that's it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Bill? Uh, okay, I guess just one thing. I, I got an email yesterday from the Consigo and Boat Club that... Uh, announced that the town had told them they were putting the docks in this Saturday uh, at the Donahue Boathouse so that, uh, again, with no ice and the fairly warm, that yep. people could start rowing. But it also warned that it would be under the winter safety conditions, uh, uh, vests uh, required, uh, whistle required, cell phone required, no, uh, no single rowers, uh, and so it looks like the boat club is getting ready to start operation, but they're, they're doing it in a safe manner. Okay, good to hear. Thank you. I, I can say this, you definitely may want to wear a vest if you go in the water. I've been in the water a couple of times. It's cold. <laughs> it's cold right now, so uh, it just sucks the breath right out of you. So wear your vest. Um, Sergeant Garen? New boat's in. Sweet. Um, we're going to have it on the water on April 10th through the 14th on, for some test runs, uh, learning, it, learning the, how to do it during a, a class that's put on by environmental police. I have 12 offices that are going to be boat, um, wow. able to operate the boat. Uh, two are reserved, two are from patrol, but I, I convinced uh, my captain to allow them to uh, be in reserve. I'm going to have one guy committed. Uh, four days a week, and then um, I have to put a second person. We we require two people, but uh, the boat's in. It should be good to go. Um, this summer, a lot of problem. I mean, we, we're getting registered right now. We, we, the boat just came in. We're, we're going through the process of registering the boat, but it'll be on the water on the 10th for test runs on Lake Quinsig, so everyone gets familiar with it before the start of the season. Okay. I, I, and with, uh, where we're docking it, I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you knew what I was going to ask. <laughs> um, my, my, my captain's talking with uh, the colonel of uh, MEP and the chief of Shrewsbury about trying to come up with something to place our boat. We're going to need um, a bigger boathouse over there. Uh, it's, it'll, be, it'll be either be on a dock or on dry land. Um, okay. It probably will not be on the Worcester side. It'll be on it, – it, more than likely it's going to be on the Shrewsbury side. It's going to be stationed on the Shrewsbury side. All right. What days of the week, if I can ask? Uh, we... uh, I'm still working that out, but um, it's probably like uh, definitely uh, a Friday and Saturdays that we're working. Um, but it's four days. It's, it's definitely be four days a week. Um, I haven't come up with the hours yet and stuff like that. Something gonna, I'll have more. We have a law enforcement meeting tomorrow with Shrewsbury Environmental and State Police, so I'll, I'll know. I can answer a lot of those questions yeah. next month. Busiest days of the week on Lake One Sigma or Good weather days, warm weather months, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And Friday as well, but uh, Saturday and Sunday. Last year, um, our captain was very generous to us with uh, giving us um, overtime to come out on, on nice days. And that's something i got to communicate through the chain of command with him again, um, of him approving it. But last year when I, I would, I would check the weather in advance and I would, I would send a, 
uh, through the chain of command saying it's going to be, you know, 88, 90 degrees on a, on a, you know, a day, a Wednesday or something like that. So, uh, especially early in the season when people want to get out there and, and, and boat, if it's 90 degrees, May 15th, um, I, I would, I would definitely request that we have the boat on the water <coughs> for a day like that. All right. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. It's, that's great news though. It's, it's and we do have the small boat too, to address uh, any, any, any Flint pond, uh, issues at Flint. Great. We do have the small boat still, great. um, that we can, that we can use. Um, and uh, it's nice because Lake Quincy now has that washing station, so we can wash the boat once we pull out of Indian, uh, Indian Lake. Not Lake Quincy, Indi Lake yeah. Indian Lake, Indian Lake yeah. has that washing station, so yeah. we don't have to bring it to our garage and wash it down anymore and That's get nice. people mad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, hope we're hoping to put those on, on at Corazini and, uh, and uh, Flint Pond. Well, like, like I said, there's a law enforcement meeting tomorrow, um, so uh, I'm sure us and Shrewsbury have a lot more information for you next, next month. All right. So... Sean's putting his head down. Oh, I, I have my other report for the P Shrewsbury Police Department. Um, the chief made a new division for us now as a community services division, which Lieutenant Palmatier is now in charge of. So boat and some other things will fall underneath uh, that division. So now he's, take, he, he's leading it up and then still have Sergeant Vitols who couldn't make it tonight. Um, he's going to be disappointed he wasn't elected for any positions. <laughs> Um, but I can make one up. <laughs> <laughs> um, few things. Uh, we are going to send 10 to 12 more officers to the, the EPO, the state, the crewman's course that most of us took a couple of years ago. Um, that's going to be in, I think, uh, early May. I believe there's still it's to be determined on what the date is. So we'll have some more people up to speed. Um, we try and we have some more new primaries for this year, and then assist officers because we always have to have two people on the boat as well. Um, the boat's out of service until the end of April. We're having some things done to it—a new fuel tank put in, so it'll be ready end of April. We'll be um, try and get it on the water down to the boathouse for emergency purposes only, and then we will start patrolling as soon as it starts warming up or Memorial Day. Full-time patrols will begin. Um, I just ordered a new jet ski for the, for the police department. We got funding for that, so now we can access Flint Pond. Uh, we got a sea three a three seater, which will go on the other side of our boathouse. So that will be um, that's going to be a, a great asset to our fleet and to be able mm. to uh, chase the problems over to Flint Pond and be able to um, take care of that issue. So that's going to be a nice piece of equipment for us. Now we can access the whole lake. Um, Perfect. And uh, I think that's all I have. We already voted on the, the buoys. Those will go out as soon as the boat comes in. Kyle and I will start putting those out and get them set up. And so if there's anywhere you guys want to move that you didn't like, then we can, we can adjust them as needed. Is there a possibility that um, someone can go out and show the Worcester guys the, the low spots so we don't, you know, so we don't take the boat out like the, the week after you put it in? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's a possibility because I, um, off, off of Stanley Wyatt last year, he, he's in tune to a lot of, he, he was our primary boat guy last year. He's going to be the yeah, primary boat yeah. guy this year. He knows. That's right. Knows you guys have been on there. For, yeah. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. I learned um, them all the hard like, way. Like I said, Lake Quinsig still bans jet ski. So 85 to 90% of our resources will be. Yeah. Indian Lake. Lake. Indian Lake. Yeah. Indian Lake you, you haven't banned them yet. <laughs> Indian Lake has been, you know, the, the, the band's stolen. So I, I can commit 85 to 90% of our resources. Perfect. Over here. All right. And rather than split it 50 50. It's, all, it's great. It makes life a lot easier. Right. You know, only, only deal with one leg. <laughs> we, we appreciate everything you guys have been doing, and, and it, it has stepped up. And <coughs> it, has made a, it has made a difference. I think it's making a dent. And uh, please pass that on to uh, um, you know, the, the, the EPO guys and the state police, too, because that, you know, that was also a big help. Sure. Sure. Comment on this. Uh, I seem to recall from the end of our meetings last uh, September or October that there was a request uh, from some of the coxswains at the, the rowing club that, uh, and since there are going to be fewer buoys now out in front of the Consigni boat ramp and, and the boathouse, that there's that group of row their eights at five in the morning when it's dark, and they were asking if a couple of those buoys, if you had some with lights on, could you use, put the buoys there since they're in the middle of the lake? Because it's very hard when it's dark at five in the morning to see those buoys. 
yeah, we'll try and outfit. We're going to try and outfit most of them uh, with lights this year. So we'll see um, what we have left. We'll order some more lights if we need to. We're going to yeah. try and get them all out. They were they were pretty um, helpful last year. I'd say at nighttime that they were really bright and people seem to like them. Yeah. Um, helps you navigate a little bit more at night as well. So we could do that. Yeah. All right. Perfect. We really appreciate it by them. Yep. Yeah, I think lights would be a, especially for nighttime. You know. Okay. Could, do you, I mean, we, if, it were, if me, we could, and I know this. I'm you know, volunteering your, because uh, you guys are the ones putting them out there. If you need any help doing that, please let us know, and you know I'll be happy to go out and thank you and help you guys. Um, but the and even with the maintenance part of it, um, you know, because we're always out there. So, mm -hmm. uh, but you know the lights lights would be helpful in all the buoys. That, you know, especially the low spot ones. So the, and the one I'm thinking of mostly is the one on, on the on the uh, uh, in between. Uh, Coast Guard or Long Island or the Eagle Island or whatever yeah. you want to call it, and th you know that's that 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 sand that sandbar we have right oh, there. Sandy bar. Yes. Yeah, the the gravel bar. If it just takes out boats every year. I want to ask residents too if they do see any any buoys that are out of place or seem to be damaged, yeah. notify us immediately so we can go and repair it or replace okay. it. Okay. Mr. Chia, I'm going to be putting out probably within a couple of weeks, if not maybe this weekend, the buoy at the entrance to the Half Moon Cove. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Need a light on that? Hmm? No. Yeah. There's no. Nah, no. Huh? Sure. It hasn't been a problem without, without a light for years, so I don't right. see where that needs to have a light. Knock on wood. Just one question about the buoy. We talked about um, numbering them, so if they do dislodge, then we know where it came from. Is that something that? Good. Uh, good point. Mm -hmm. We do. We do have the numbers for them. We didn't do it last year. It was, um, we added so many. We have the mapping for them. I can do that this year. We will, we'll, we'll plan on numbering everything uh, from north to south. And that way, if, you know, there's an emergency, somebody say I'm near buoy number right. eight or 10, Perfect. and yeah. we can go that from there. Yep. It'll be marked on the map so we can have engineering print something out so we can give copies of it to, of it or, to people. Or I just saw buoy 10 you know, <laughs> yeah. by my house. Yeah. Yep. Driving away in a pickup truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen. <laughs> okay. Um, Patrick, you have anything uh, you want to? No? Um, set the date for the uh, oh, review correspondence. So I, I did get a letter from, uh, from Mike Moore uh, regarding the... Um, there's also an email here from um, Igor uh, Sorokin, who was in the, who was in the um, <coughs> last last uh, month, and um, he's got a crop of he, he's at 24 Lakeside Drive. Excuse me, he's, he's got a crop of um, lilies, water lilies, in, in front of his house, which is which are nasty and hard to navigate through. And was asking us if we could go and treat those. Those particular plants are native to the lake, so we don't typically target them. Doesn't mean we can't if they become a nuisance. But um, the, the really bad news is it's in the protect, protected zone, so we can't really put any chemical treatment there. We can pull them out, but these, uh, these plants are incredibly nasty. Um, so uh, uh, we, we did send a, a letter to Mike Moore asking him to uh, put the appropri appropriation on there. and. Um, I did get response that, that they have done that. So um, we'll go with that. So uh, next item is going to set the date of the next meeting. Is there any conflict with the room on the fourth, um, on, on the last Wednesday, Wednesday April of the month? 26th? The 26th is the school committee meeting. Okay. This room is available the Wednesday before, which is the 19th. All right. Or we can have Jess find us another room for the 26th. I know there's a nice room. I don't know if it'll be completed yet. We can check. All right. And we kind of reached out that, about that, and I'm yeah. sure like everybody else has to. Everyone, everyone. You know was. they're they're currently doing trainings on it. Right. Uh, the facility, the training room. Mm. So. And I know that um, uh, SMC is uh, 
they're going to be they're going to be putting in equipment. So so it's going to be similar to this where we can just kind of come in and film it and do all that stuff and yeah. and have them uh, have them do it. So it's not a you know, the setup cameras and all that. But um, I guess for the, for next month, unless we go back to DRC or something, we can. I don't have a problem with the. Would you say it was the nineteenth? Yeah, the Wednesday before. Does anyone have an issue with? It works. Week? That's good. Is that good? That's good. You want the nineteenth then? Nineteenth. All right. So April nineteenth at seven p.m. In this room. In this. In this room. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. Okay. And now. Make a motion. We adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Aye. 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 Thank you very much for coming.